This is Tech Addicts. This week, space satellites, kids' smartwatches, a big tablet from Lenovo, Realme's amazing pricing, colorizing black and white photographs, and ray tracing on your phone. Hello and welcome to the Tech Addicts Podcast. I am your host, Gareth. It is Sunday, the 28th of November, and this man is Ted Salmon. How are hello, you doing? hello, hello. Greetings to everyone from North Wales. And it is the most boring weather day ever in North Wales. It's coldish and cloudyish and sunnyish, and it's just a typical kind of British day, really. You never know what might be around the corner. What's it like there? One, it's it's almost the same as I look at the skylight. There is there is some blue sky, there is some white clouds, and there is a big grey cloud as well. So I have all different types of weather in one little shot of the sky. Indeed. Have you had a good week? I have. Um, it's it's been busy enough, I suppose. Um, mm-hmm. But I've got a few gadgets in to play with, um, and I've uh, and I recovered from. <laughs> editing and creating the video for this podcast oh, yeah. last week. How did uh, that which... go? You, I saw it when you put it up on YouTube, and um, I did start listening to it, and I got quite confused because it was a premiere and not a proper file or something. And the and the beginning bit was missing when I went there, but then it came in later. Um, anyway, how did that go? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do the premiere again. I just figured I'd do that for shits and giggles. Um, uh, it. <laughs> It just took a bit of time because I had to establish what I, what I wanted it to look like and things like that. It was a, a bit of a whim that I went out on and just uh, put together something that I figured that I would be able to do quite quickly whenever the podcast is all recorded. It's a time-consuming thing, and then you have to output it from your computer as well with the video render, and then you've got to upload it to YouTube as well for it to um, to do its thing with before it allows it to... to become uh streamable to other people so you know um it's it's a time consuming thing but you must have you you must have sat there in real time because the the pictures that went through um lined up pretty much with what we were talking about so you must have done that manually didn't you i did yes and i I, that's the reason why i wanted to do the youtube podcast thing because from time to time we'll we'll talk about something on the show here and we'll we'll have to describe it to those who are sitting in their car or on a train listening to this uh, in some corner of the world and they might decide you know it would be nice to actually have an idea what you're talking about so I, I wanted to be able to try and implement that in some way and they can they can listen to it on YouTube you can have YouTube playing passively in the background um, and, and stream it and then pick out your phone whenever you want to go, what are they talking about? What does it sound like? Because that Gareth one that can't tell his arse from his elbow and uh, and go, all oh, right, that's what it looks like. Crash into the car in front. Well, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, they have to pay attention to when they're driving and, and uh, remember where they are sitting there on their elbows. Yeah. Very good. Anyway, well done. I, I, I'm not sure going forward if it's going to it's going to take up all your time to do that, unless you find some streamlined, quick way of doing it and not quite as perfect as it was. <laughs> well, I think it, it, it's one of those things that become an awful lot easier to do the more you get used to doing it um, mm-hmm. and you know, establishing shortcuts and things like that. But uh, having a look at it now, just to see, it's, it's had 85 views on YouTube. On YouTube, so that I don't know whether or not that's that's people that we know have listened to us in the past who've gone to it or 85 new people or whatever but 85 people have found benefit from it and from the looks of it they've watched 75 percent of it so right. it seems to be a little bit of a success and if it's easy for some or it's easier for someone to access that way then i'm happy enough to continue to do it good stuff we should look forward to that going forward then yes 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 so what what about you how's your week been um, no, nothing to report really. Um, uh, nothing very exciting and boring, boring, boring. <laughs> Continuing with what I'm doing, 
and I, nothing, just nothing happens in my life. And most people would kind of see what I'm, how I live, and think, "You must be bored shitless." Go out and do something, but actually, I'm really content. I just, I love tinkering around with my podcasts and my um, online stuff, and and fartasing about, and reviewing phones, and just doing stuff. And I'm just a bit of a hermit, and I just never seem to do very much. The 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 bit the the in, most interesting thing I do probably is go and play snooker occasionally with my a friend of mine, and but that's only occasional. Uh, so I've waffled on a long about a lot uh, long enough about that. <laughs> wow, that, there was a little window into Ted's life there for the first time, <laughs> um, and and it does sound. It sounds like more than some other people I know would would get up to. Um, getting out and playing snooker is better than sitting watching Babe Station all day. Yeah, well, well, the, the big bit I did miss out, of course, was that I'm um, officially full time care of my parents. So. Um, a number of times a week, I, I go and spend the day with them. Um, so I, I do disappear for, you know, six hours, seven hours on those days um, and go and attend to whatever they're doing and whatever they're up, up to. And I'm kind of on call for them as well. So, you know, I, I probably understate what I do in that respect. Um, but, uh, yeah, there you go. And you have to trouble solve their technical issues as well and, and deal with their, their yeah. problems. Yeah. Yeah. All sorts of stuff that I, I do with them. And as they get older, they're in their middle 80s now. You know, they um, they just can't do stuff like they used to be able to. I mean, even like get, going around and um, moving the, the heavy um, grass-filled uh, bin for the bin men to collect. You know, mm-hmm. there's no there's no way they could move it. It's just, just little stuff like that. Um, and, you know, helping my mum cook, um, for example, because she loves cooking, but she gets worn out um, after no time at all, just mixing stuff for cakes and that sort of thing. And I, I just go and help her do the bits that wear her out. Anyway, yeah. I don't know how we meandered into this. It's your fault. And it is, yeah. It's a tech po- podcast. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that <laughs> before people start switching off. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, first up is uh, a, a story that we touched on. It was last week, wasn't it, about... Um, France's new rule that they're going to cover all of their car parks with solar panels, oh, yeah, which is yeah. quite a, a novel idea. Uh, and Waffles Walford Yay. has written in about <laughs> some in South Africa. Do you want to, <laughs> now that you have an understanding of what way they're doing this, because I think you were a bit confused by the the idea in the last show. Yeah, I didn't know. I thought they were going to put it on the floor, but obviously not. They're putting it on roofs. And Waffles Walford, such a great name. He lives in South Africa. And maybe Waffles is a name in South Africa. Um, but it, to me, it sounds really cool and, and, and hip. Anyway, he lives in South Africa. Um, I'm assuming it's a he. And um, he has submitted a photograph of a car park in South Africa which is belonging to a national um, car parking chain. And sure enough, um, as you w- described, uh, Gareth, they just put roofs over, ne- over the top of the parking bays. Um, so as we said last week, there'll be an infrastructure cost, which presumably someone is going to pay for, as we, was, we were saying last week. Um, but it looks like um, it could be... A g- I wonder if it moves with the sun... No, it probably doesn't, does it? That would be really expensive to put that in. Mm. But it probably points towards the sun where it is most of the time. Well, it's actually it's a fascinating picture because if you look at it, the, the solar panel, there, there's two rows of car parking spaces sitting opposite each other. So you, you park uh, uh, front to front or, or nose to rear of, of two. It's a standard car park. <laughs> but the, yeah. the solar panel actually only covers one row. Uh, the other cars on the other side of it are in are not oh, in shadow, yeah. right. which uh, made me think that, you know, that they have the opportunity to put the solar panels on the other side as well, which I thought they would have put at the other angle. So as the sun went over, you know, east to west, but then this could be north, south or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it might not be effective to cover that. But also at I, I, Waffles, I'd be interested to know if, if you have any idea or anyone has any, any idea where the electricity generated for this goes. Is it something that the 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 supermarket or, or uh, the the chain has it put in so that they can power their own store from the electricity, or do they sell it back to the grid, 
or do they, as we're finding out, uh, charge electric vehicles from it? Do they allow free charging like Tesco's used to do up until recently? And people are actually upset that you can't go and charge your car for free at Tesco anymore. <laughs> Bonkers. Um, but yeah, um, that, that, that's, that's what I'm wondering what will happen and whether or not you look at different countries. Are we going to see that maybe South Africa has it that the store is allowed to take the electricity and, and just not have a bill for electricity? France uh, maybe sells it back to the government, whereas here it would probably be some sort of communist style setup where the government in- tells us all we have to install it and then takes all of it uh, for <laughs> yes. themselves and sells it to foreign countries or something like that at a, at a loss. <laughs> Yeah, because there's got to be something in it for someone. And yeah. It's not the French government just being altruistic and saying, for the good of the world um, power uh, situation, we'll pay to put these in and then let people just have the electricity for free. No, 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 you can't have that. Don't be silly. <laughs> anyway, well, it's, it's fascinating. I look forward to seeing this and uh, hopefully these will start to to be erected over the next couple of years and we'll 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 get them and then during the summer you can get into a nice cool car after you've done all your shopping they need to come down in price though that's the thing if they're yeah. going to encourage everyone to do this with all their houses and everything i mean we uh, driving around the town where i live I, I there's one house that i can I think of where i see solar panels on the roof one single house and um you know if, if that was a much cheaper deal to get organized i think it would be more widespread Yes, I, I know a fellow who tried to sell his house and then realised that he couldn't because he had a massive amount of debt on his roof that was currently yeah. being paid off and he had to try and get the person who was buying the house to buy the debt as well. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, which is, which is completely bonkers to imagine. Yeah. Um, but th- there's one thing about these solar panels that always intrigued me and I remember watching a documentary about a, I think it was a schoolboy who came up with uh, this revolutionary idea for solar panels that they should be in the shape of a tree. Because that's the most natural way to get as much light as possible oh, and yeah. uh, having uh, little solar panels all over it, a bit like leaves on a tree, because that's photosynthesis. The but then, whilst they, they, the, the documentary said about how this produces sort of 10 times the amount of electricity as a normal um, solar panel, we, we still continue to see the normal style solar panel being ruled out now i'm wondering where where that technology went to of the of the tree idea because he Mm. built one and produced it and and went look this is producing more than that yeah so uh yeah we're we're not seeing that it would be great to have a load of solar trees out all around the place uh they could even cut down normal trees and put in the (laughs) (laughs) solar ones that would go down well wouldn't it (laughs) Uh, i can see how eco-friendly you are All right, well, enough goofing about. Uh, Ted, what have you done to your desktop? Oh, yeah, I have done something this week. I should have mentioned that when you said, what have you been up to this week? And eventually I did get round to, after Frank Neidhart said how easy it was and Windows will will sort it out for you, I did get round to doing this whole monitor thing. So I had this new monitor um, ages ago now. I spoke about it on the show. And I got the old one, and I thought that would work quite well as my um, editing screen in portrait for when I do The Valley Diary which is a um, publication I'm the editor for um, and sure enough I did it and I plugged one cable into the graphics card um, HDMI one into the motherboard HDMI um, told Windows um, you know what was going on and it just found it and it works brilliantly well I'm really impressed with it and I know that you, you're going to say I told you so because you told me to do this ages ago and I never got round to it, but it just works ex- exceptionally well. The mouse runs across from one screen to the other on the fly. Um, and the added bonus is that on my old monitor, unlike my new monitor, I had a pass-through USB 3. So on the side of the, the old monitor, there's two USB 3 ports and... Um, a cable that goes to my computer and it, and it makes those two ports USB 3. And the advantage of that is that my stupid Logitech ma- mouses like yours always seem to lose their stupid connection and you're, you're forever um, scrolling around trying to get the mouse to, to, to reconnect itself. It's a, it seems to be a Logitech thing. Anyway, so since I put the 
um, unifying dongle in one of those um, ports, uh, which is at the top of the screen, it, uh, it hasn't once mucked about the mouse because it's in very clear and close um, eye shot of the of the um, of of where the dongle is, and it just works so much better. So, I've, uh, apart from doing my magazine thingy, I've also like at the moment we're recording a podcast, and I've got the Audacity and the MP3 Skype recorder and the Skype window, um, all of that stuff off onto the portrait panel leaving me my main screen for doing all the other stuff to do with looking at what we're talking about it it really is ever so well thought out i think by whoever's doing the system I mean, i'm sure that mac does the same thing but um i'm just really impressed particularly the way the mouse just goes from one to the other on the fly and you can just move stuff around very very good so um well done for pressing me that way and well done frank for um encouraging me further well done, yes. All, it's great to see you've joined us in the 2022. Yeah. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> and you've, something, you've done something similar, haven't you? Uh, well, well, I mentioned last week that I have a little tiny monitor into... Uh, it's a, a little 7-inch monitor uh, into play with and uh, I, I, I run some trials on it and stuff like that and, and see where it would be best fitting. And right now... It's uh, it's running underneath my main screen with uh, with Audacity running on it, uh-huh. uh, which is which is kind of sweet and it, it's a be- I really love it because it's so small. Uh, the deep uh, the, the the pixel density looks fantastic, so it's it's really full of color and it's a it's a monitor for you to plug into you know a camera and be able to see uh, the the output from your camera. But it's only seven twenty p, so there is that to take into account. But I just I think it's a really good monitor. I like it a great deal. But there'll be a video coming up fairly soon on YouTube uh, of me having to play with it and putting it in a few different places and through its pieces. So do you need an HDMI for that as well? Uh, yes, it runs by HDMI and yeah. it's got its own power cord as well. So it, it's uh, it's all plugged in. But the stand's a wee bit wonky. I don't like the stand. It's a bit annoying. And I can't get it to be... A st- I can't centralise it. It's just really... An, it, oh, never mind. It sits at an angle a wee bit. <laughs> it's bothering my eyes. <laughs> Appar- apparently, the Nokia um, T10, which we'll come to later, has this co- capability as well. Um, but it, I, I can't imagine it's got an HDMI, so it must connect wirelessly, I think, to do a similar job. I don't know. Um, anyway, we'll come we'll come to that later. But, yeah, it's yeah. quite a neat quite a neat idea to have a, a tiny screen and not a whack and great big one. Um Although for me the edit the you know the magazine editing works really well in that respect because it's a nice big screen. Anyway, yeah, good stuff. I wonder how many you can plug into Windows before it starts to suffer. You know, do you just can you max out all your all your ports and have? Well, I suppose in my case I would be able to have five. Right. Um, you might be able to have five as well. I can't remember the back of your graphics card, um, mm. but yeah. You could, just, well, you, you could do a split. You could use a splitter, couldn't you? You could, yeah. I wonder how many Windows 10 or 11 supports. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Well, I suppose uh, I've seen people who have who have six screens uh, on the wall in front of them, so they've obviously been able to do up to six, and then yeah. they'll play flight simulators and things like that, or, or all the way around them. I think. Yeah. Mm. All right, moving into hard line for the hardware. Uh, up now is uh, space dot com. I um, have a, an interesting article on the Blue Walker 3 satellite, which has unfurled its communications array, and it's the size of a small apartment, apparently. And this is going to be used to allow for uh, cellular satellite-type uh, broadbandy-type affairs um, to, to allow you to just have better connectivity all around the world. Ted, what can you tell us about this? No more than that, really. It's it, it's just the first of its kind being so big. Um, 693 square feet, um, or as you say, roughly the size of a small apartment, and it's sitting up there. And the, the, the there seems to be a, a race going on between, um, who is it, SpaceX and um, Amazon and OneWeb, 
um, to to get this stuff out there and get people connected. So presumably in time, even Amazon will be doing deals with people for cellular connectivity. They're mm. branching out into that. Um, and this thing just sits above the earth, turning with the earth, presumably. And I, I guess that this is you know just one of many to come so they can smother the earth with these things. There, there must be pots of money out there too. I mean, this must have cost a fortune to deploy this in space, mustn't it? And you know, I, I guess that they um, are doing business projections on being, you know, in time they'll get that back from people like us signing up to it, and then hoping it doesn't get too cloudy. <laughs> well, yeah, but there's the other side of this as well that I, I sometimes wonder about. And that, you know, it, it, it spans back to the likes of, say, Elon Musk and his, his uh, pursuit for Mars. Mm. You know, you, you have to operate on the Earth within the world's laws. If you were to do something like this and put it up into interstellar orbit, or a low orbit, as, as it is, um, does that mean that the laws don't quite apply? You know, say, for example, uh, data collection, privacy uh collection and things like that uh those sorts of laws do they do they apply still to these satellites if they're up there would people jumping onto it uh be able to go oh and and then suddenly realize that yeah the what the gdpr style laws that we have established here in the Euro in europe don't apply to yeah. things that are in orbit and yeah. you you sign up to a whole new thing mm. and and that's why companies are going oh oh let, let's jump on board this because we can't operate as as effectively as we sh uh, wish we could on earth with the, the 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 arrays that we have currently set up that are uh, sort of bound to government uh, legislation and regulations so if we were to stick something up in a stratosphere then we can have every bit of information we want there's no rules yeah which and whenever you get to Mars, they'll have even more. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, that takes us back to for all for all mankind again, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Where you know they they <laughs> they, they, they kind of get to the moon and and re they realise there's, there's no root, there's no rules there. No one no one's legislated for this. And as you say, the same thing will be true of Mars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And for those who don't or who aren't aware, for all mankind is a TV show on Apple TV that Ted's working his way through that I watched <laughs> a while ago. Um, and it it is it, it sort of it. What, what makes you see what or makes you think about what what the possibilities are, and you can understand other people's uh, people who have money's passion for being able to get out of uh, regulatory approvals from from governments and and councils mm. and things like that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I I do wonder going forward if this is going to be a good thing because it sounds like a good thing, but. Everything that's good always has a, a the opposite of a cloud with a silver lining. What's the, what's the opposite of that? Uh, a silver a lining, bad with a apple. Cloud. Or... <laughs> Every silver lining has a cloud. <laughs> yes, true. But, uh, and clouds being um, pertinent to this thing, because if there's clouds, it won't work anyway. Um, and yeah, I mean, eventually the Earth's just going to be surrounded by satellites. The way it's going, isn't it? Um, yes. They, they, when they launch a rocket or something, they'll have to um, book a space to get through what's in the way. <laughs> or put some sort of big uh, snow ploy type thing on the front yes. of it. Yes. Just push through. <laughs> eventually, we're going to create a diosphere out of all of these things that are up there as well. You'll be able to walk from one satellite to another. Mm. That'll be excited. Very Go good. out for a run around the world. <laughs> All right, uh, Ted, from your picture, I noticed that you have two Elgato Stream Decks. Are yes. you going to be getting the new Elgato Stream Deck Plus? No, I I can't justify this. Um, Elgato Stream Deck Plus, the, the, the company have decided that they got fed up with Loop Deck doing what Loop Deck do. And um, if you look at the Loop Deck, um, it looks very similar to this. It's got the difference is it's got an, uh, a, a, a display readout um, with data on it and four turny knobs with knurled turny knobs. Um, now the, the the Loop Deck has got six of them. This has only got four, and the Loop Deck's got some buttons, but they're clearly going down the same route. Um, 
but the the reason that the um, my setup is is better is because this new one's only got eight buttons on it. So I mean, I already was fed up with only having fifteen, so I got two and I got thirty. Um, but going back to four, even though you've got the gnarly knobs as well, I just don't think for me it would work very well. Now, for someone who's a content creator or is fiddling about with Photoshop or whatever, it might work really well for them. But I still think the Leap Deck has got more about it. And, you know, if um, Elgato was were, were going to do this, I, th- I think they could have done it differently and better and certainly have more buttons on it. Um, or... With the loop deck, the buttons are actually um, hot swappable, and these ones are like the traditional stream deck. You need to go into the software and change, the, assign them to each button. And I mean, you can have um, folders and stuff, and, and that, it would work. It's just that I'd like to see more of them. Um, but yeah, very nice, very cute, and two hundred quid. <laughs> Yeah, I was actually really close to pl- to hitting the button to buy there because it it ships in two days. It's uh, it's available on November twenty second, and Ted's kindly put a a link to the Amazon website. And I was I was really close to actually thinking this would be the one because I I would I'd, I'd love to be able to just hit volume on the fly and turn up and down microphones without having to go into Windows settings to adjust my microphone settings and things. I would like them in front of me, but the, but, there's, but there's an awful cheaper way of doing it. Just get just get a control knob with a, a dial on it uh, for a, for twenty quid from Amazon. If that's the kind of thing you want to do, there's lots of those available. Plug it into a USB port, and it's a volume knob. You know, you got it. So you, you just have to really want to. Um, well, it's a toy, basically, isn't it? Well, it might be a productivity tool if you're a creator, I suppose, and you are a creator. So perhaps it would work for you. <laughs> but yes, you'd, you'd obviously you almost talked me into the to getting one of the original Steam deck, Stream decks or or the 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 Mark II, and I've always been hovering over the buy button, and even that other one that we came up with uh, a couple of weeks back, the the keys or whatever it was called, um, that that was a, a nice option too. But th- this is even nicer again, yeah. and it has a it just has that sort of it's a, a twirly knob is what I want. <laughs> Yeah. built into it 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 just it goes that extra level this one goes up to 11 you know what I, I really like this one have a, have a look at the loop deck though because there are clear advantages and more dials and more buttons with the loop deck um so you know before you hit the buy do check that out as well and if memory serves the loop deck is considerably more expensive as well isn't it no it's about the same price 229 i think it is you, you, the the, the mm. one that compares with this one Right, okay. Well, I'll investigate it uh, at a later date yeah. and get back to you. You can talk to Aidan as well, because Aidan Bell has got the loop deck, um, and he uses it for his creation stuff, and he's got a stream deck as well. Not this new one, but he's got an ordinary one. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, okay, well, we'll have a play. We'll see mm-hmm. what happens. Uh, next up is the Garmin Bounce. Now, this particularly interested me, because I've seen a few of these... Uh, hit the, the the news headlines uh, from time to time and I've had need of them having a child. Uh, this is a particular type of smartwatch that is LTE connected and it allows you to track your kids and it's a wee bit more fun than, than I don't know, uh, attaching a, a piece of string to them or something like that. Uh, this allows for them to be able to send text messages and uh, they can send their position to you and there was a few other features, I, I can't, live tracking, uh, location tracking, boundary entry and exit as well as assistance modes as well. Um, it's got step counting as well, sleep tracking, which you need on a kid, um, <laughs> uh, GPS speed and distance, and uh, it, it all feeds into the Garmin Junior app, so you can communicate with your child uh, via this. The, the, you need to have uh, the uh, subscription plan as well to be able to access the LTE connectivity, so you can track your, track your, track your child at all times. But I've been thinking about those, and I, I do like the idea of them for a child and also for the other end of the spectrum as well. For for an elderly person as well, they can be quite useful. Um, I, I have knowledge of a, a person who asked me for something like this before because their, their father kept escaping uh, from the home that they were in, and he, he just wanted to keep tabs on them. 
and he was looking for something like this, but it wasn't quite as easy as as that because he had to sell it as a as a as a watch to the father so that the father would wear it. Um, so th- this looks a lot more like it, like something that you would want to have on your kid's wrist. Uh, it's got a 1.3 inch LCD touchscreen and chemically strengthened glass because you absolutely need that with a child, otherwise they'll wreck it immediately. I don't think it says that it's water resistant or it, it, to any respect. Uh, but uh, Ted, what did you think of this? I was just looking on the um, Garmin website to find out what the subscription subscription cost is, and I can only find it, find it in American uh, dollars. But it's nine ninety nine a month, so you'd have to um, cough up ten dollars a month to have the LTE working and the tracking mm. and all the rest of it. It's very cute though. I'm, I'm amazed at how big it is. If you look at it on that kid, I know I know it's a kid's wrist, but even so, I mean, it looks like the size of a, an Apple Watch. Um, uh, what's it called? Extreme? No. What's the Apple Watch called? Anyway, that new um, um, uh, tough one. Um, yeah. It looks like a, a, um, a you know, that kind of size. Um, although that kid might have a really small wrist, I suppose. Anyway, um, I really like the green one. And <laughs> I think it's a really good idea. And I think that because they've made it kid attractive with colours and, you know, just stuff. I think kids will be really interested in having them as well. I think it's a quite a smart move from Garmin and just in time for Christmas and, yeah, I think that they'll do well with it. I'm just not sure about this um, $10 a month thing though. I'm not sure if, maybe they'll buy it but not buy into that. Yeah, you, you have seen in the past where they've they've managed to bundle into the main price a couple of years worth of, mm. of GPRS data or something like that because that's all it really needs to be able to pinpoint your location and send it back to you. But $10, $10 a month does sound like a wee bit of a subscription plan that mm. might generate a wee bit more wealth for them than than actually providing a service. Oh, here it uh, is. It says um, it's swim friendly. Yes, uh, 5 ATM water resistance apparently. Right. okay. Five at the minute water resistance, so IP maybe tomorrow five. it won't be. <laughs> IP67, IP, oh no, five, withstands 50 metres, um, splashes, rain or snow, showering, swimming, diving into water, snorkelling. Yeah, so it looks like you can get it wet anyway. Yeah. Good, all right, so they, they can wear it into the pool and things. Mm. Yeah, it, nice. it does not look good, and it comes in black camo, green burst, or lilac floral, so it should mm. appeal to to most kids in in one shape or form. I like it. I I would have one for my kid, and uh, I think for peace of mind, as long as they wear it all the time, uh, paying some yeah. sort of monthly subscription would be okay. Okay, but it would be nice to be able to pick your own. You know, you could yeah. get pay as you go or something like that, and get a, an even cheaper deal again. Yeah. What's the what's the battery like? Did you did you mention that? I don't think it did. Um, probably. Well, it doesn't have too many smart features, so. Well, it the, might last the, really the reason well. the reason I ask that because the next the very next story is about the new Motorola watch, which has got a fourteen hour battery. Now, this is a low end Motorola watch, um, to be fair, and it's really cheap where you can buy it. At the moment, it looks like it's in Canada and um, North America, only. Um, and it's about like you know seventy five dollars or something, um, and it's got loads of stuff going on for it. But fourteen hours battery, and presumably that's up to yeah yeah it is up to fourteen hours, which means that your average person might not even get through a day between getting up in the morning and going to bed. I mean, for goodness sake, you'd think that at least that they would put a, a half you know eighteen hour battery. But I, I think the same is true. Some people are complaining about the Pixel Watch in this respect as well, although that does claim twenty up to 24 hours at least. Um, anyway, yeah, so a cheap Motorola watch, which looks very boring, but kind of does the basics, and I'm sure it will sell in um, lots of uh, markets because it's so cheap. What do you think? I don't think I have a problem with the 14-hour battery. Right. If it keeps the cost down considerably and the weight and size of the device of, of the, the actual watch down, um, most people charge their smartwatches every day anyway. So having a little bit extra juice at the expense of weight and cost, um, then that 
that, 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 that's fine. You know, 14 hours is nine o'clock in the morning. You take it off and put it on your wrist and go to work. And then that's you good until 11 o'clock at night when it should be dying and you just throw it back on charge. Or perhaps it has something on the back that allows if you need a quick top up, if you've got reverse charging on your phone, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, it does. Do it, it does um, 60 minute top up time. Um, yeah. It doesn't say what you have to do to get that, though. But don't forget, this is up to 14 hours. So you say that 14 hours is OK and you'll get from, you know, bed to bed with it. But actually, if it's up to 14 hours, that probably means in reality it's 10 hours, doesn't it? In which case you will be charging it during the day. Well, yeah, you, you wonder what the sort of real life uh, length of time would be on this. You know, if if you were using it all day, every day to, to monitor your steps and listen to music and things like that and, and uh, using Google Assistant on it, then w- does that really impact or is it 14 hours uh, of, of regular use? They don't actually make that clear. No. Uh, so if, if you were to turn it down to low power mode, could you stretch that out to 24 hours? Um, and not actually use it as much. You just use it for looking at the time most of the time, and then maybe spend about fifteen minutes a day actually interacting with it. Yeah, and also this is um, not Wear OS, so it's it's their own Moto proprietary mm. software. Um, so I mean, it's just low end, isn't it? It's not even plugged into a Garmin type system. It's, it's low end and it's cheap, and they're rolling the dice, aren't they? <laughs> I hadn't realised it wasn't Wear OS. Moving on. <laughs> uh, Samsung, Samsung's Galaxy A54 has been leaked out by OnLeak, and this is a good-looking uh, mid-range, I would say mid-range phone, um, that uh, is the, it's surprisingly, the, the update of the A53 that actually <laughs> came before this. Um, Ted, what, what features can we expect from the A54? Well, um, the, the the A53 has got um, a, a super AMOLED 120 hertz refresh rate screen, six and a half inches, um, with um, Android 12 on board. Um, so presumably this will arrive with Android 13. It did have a micro SD card slot. I bet you they're going to take that away this time. Stereo speakers, yes. No 3.5 millimeter. Um, yes to NFC, but it depends where you buy it. So be careful with that one. Um, and a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Obviously no DEX and no wireless charging. Um, but the A54... Um, as you say, it's all kind of leaks to stuff. It looks like they're reducing the screen size down from 6.5 to 6.4, which is good in my book. Um, and apart from that, we don't really know a huge amount more about it. The, the, the room, rumours say a 50 megapixel prime camera, uh, primary camera, um, mm. and still that uh, AMOLED screen, which is good, and the same size battery, or maybe slightly bigger, with a 5,100 instead of 5,000. Um, so watch, we'll have to watch this space on that. But th- these Samsung mid-range phones, you know, they'll be pitching this at the same place as my Motorola Edge 30 Neo that I spoke about last week, um, mm. which incidentally still has my SIM card in it a week later. Um, mm. 300 quid um, is that, that kind of pitch, and that's where they'll be going with the A54, so in that kind of territory. Now, the, the advantage with my um, for my moto is that it's got Qi charging um, but then you get lots of smarts with Samsung Galaxy as we know uh, so yeah it will be a really good solid mid-ranger I think and I, don't, I doubt it will have all the um, update promises of the, the flagships and the, the more expensive ones but they'll, they'll certainly look after it yeah it, it, it does look good and I, it, it just goes to show that this, this model is still particularly attractive no matter uh, what happens in the world? You know they they keep cranking it out. It's yep. good to see. Good mm-hmm. to see. All right, um, Lenovo are possibly going to be squeaking out a new tablet called the Tab Extreme Woo-hoo. that will have the MediaTek Dimensity <laughs> Nine Thousand system on a chip, which is very exciting. Uh, this this will be a, a fairly top end tablet, I would imagine, with a word like extreme in it and. This is spelt with an E X T, and it's not a big crazy X. You know, it, it's not something that you uh, you take extreme sports or, or you know jump out of planes with or bicycling or something like that. Um, it should have eight gigabytes of RAM. They would like to think. Um, 
Android 13 and mm -hmm. uh, a 3000 by 1876 display resolution, which is quite sizable. Um, is that 2K? What, I think that's 2K. Uh, no, it? uh, uh, no, it's just less than. Less. No, it's just more, sorry, than 2K, yeah. Right. It'd be okay. 14 4, wouldn't it? It'd be 2K. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, so uh, this might, they well, they speculate that if this manages to squeak out in May before the Pixel tablet, uh, this could be the first one to launch with the latest version of Android 13. Android 13L, would that be? No. Um, no. 12L is the end of the Ls, I think. Oh. So um, it is a bit like Honeycomb then, old 12L. I think, yeah, I don't think we'll see L again after 12. I could be wrong. Oh. Who knows what Google might do? But as I understood it, they're rolling in the 12L features into 13, and 12L was a test bed for moving that forward. Um, anyway, we don't actually know much about this um, device, um, but it does look really interesting, as does you know a lot of this Lenovo stuff. Um, and hopefully they'll um, they'll actually keep it up to date a bit, unlike most of the Lenovo stuff, um, and it will. Be what size is the screen? Did you did you say? Um, I don't oh, think it, it has say. details no. of that. No, it looks uh, well. It's hard to say. It'd what probably it looks be like, eleven but, or yeah. well, it's P twelve Pro kind of territory, so it might be twelve. Oh, okay, which makes it into a good media consumption device. Um, anyway, yeah, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Because we don't know much about it really. But extreme is, um, you know, that makes it sound like it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't say. There was a band called Extreme. Oh, I'm going to listen to them later on. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, just popped into my head there. Okay, Realme 10 Pro and 10 Pro Plus uh, have arrived with 108 megapixel cameras. That's pretty impressive. Um, and they're going to have Android 13 as well, alongside a big 5,000 milliamp bar batteries and uh, Realme UI 4.0 out of the box. What else can we expect from these doohickeys? Well, the the, pre the, the, the premium um, feature here is the price. It's just staggering. Uh, you know, a bit like the Moto I spoke about earlier. Um, we're talking about even less money than that. We're talking about two hundred and between 200 and 250 quid, probably more like... No nearer to 200 quid um now the, the the 10 pro has got an lcd display but the, te the 10 pro plus um which is um about the same size they're, they're both about 6.7 inches um has got an amoled um with 120 hertz refresh actually the lcd on the 10 pro has got a 120 hertz refresh as well but you do get the amoled screen Dimensity 1080p you get on the um, the Pro version, whereas on the non-Pro version you get the Snapdragon 695, which is perfectly good enough. Um, mm -hmm. There's no micro SD card slot on the 10 Pro Plus, whereas there is on the 10 Pro, which is a bit odd, given that they're really not far off each other in terms of costing. They both got stereo speakers. They've got both got three point five millimeter out. Um, the Pro Plus version has got NFC, whereas the non, uh, sorry, the the Ten Pro has not got NFC. So be careful about that one, everyone. Um, and also on the cheaper, well cheaper, there's, there's just not much in them in price. The Ten Pro has got a side mounted capacitive fingerprint scanner, and the um, the Ten Pro Plus has got a um, under display optical one both have got the same size batteries except that the pro plus version has got 67 watt charging um so 50 percent in 17 minutes they claim um and the um the, the the pro version sorry the yeah the 10 pro has only inverted commas got 33 watt wire charging so no chi charging of course but look at the it's all about the price here it's 220 euros and 220 uh, 30 euros they're quoting in gsm arena and if they're that prices it's just staggering, isn't it? The pro it is. how how do they do this? I don't know. Yeah, um, I, I I hadn't actually clocked the price at all. I'm a bit taken aback by that. Yeah. Uh, will we see these in general release, or will we have to import them ourselves? No, I think that they'll come to the to um, Western markets. 
The, okay. the other Realme phones have certainly done that. They might take a bit longer to get here um, after release day, but um, they certainly will get here. And they're both five G. I'm trying to. I'm trying to find. I'm trying to pick fault. They're both arriving on Android thirteen. Um, you can get the Pro version in a 256 gigabyte, 12 gigabyte version, which um, won't be the 230 euros, of course, but at least you can get it. Um, there's no OIS on the main 108 megapixel camera, but they've both got that. Um, th- this is, there's just so little to pick fault with, isn't there? No, oh, well, there's, there's no, four, the no 4K Pro Plus. Okay, there's no 4K um, video recording, um, if that's a nitpick for people. Sorry, what were you saying? Oh, no, no, that's, that's fine. Sorry, that was important. Um, yeah, uh, I find the, the Realme 10 Pro Plus, you can pick it up for £285. Oh, what, what storage is it? Uh, that's the 8 gig. No, wait, sorry. Yeah, eight gig, 100 and, 128 gigabytes of storage, 8 gigabytes of RAM, £285. Oh, so it's not 230 then. The two five six gigabyte one is three hundred and twenty eight pounds, and then the twelve gigabyte of RAM version will be three hundred and seventy two pounds. Okay, that 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 making it two hundred and eighty five quid makes it very much in the same territory as the Neo, the um, Edge thirty Neo, and um, also the the Samsung that we just talked about, the A fifty four. So there's a lot of competition growing in this in this area, isn't there? It's almost as if everyone's out there saying, right, we've got to get this to be about 300 quid or just under and let's all fight everyone for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. With with economic downturns and recessions being talk of the day, um, anyone who, who needs a new phone or, a, a, you know, if, if they're, they're probably going to take the phone that they have and make it last as long as possible or or look for something if they are forced into having to get a new phone if they break their old one or something this is the kind of thing that they're going to go for so it's 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 good that some of these companies are just getting ahead of the uh the 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 gradient before people start jumping ship i yeah. can't imagine going and getting a flagship phone in this day and age now no oh wait until after the recession uh, before I start entertaining a new phone. Definitely. I was comparing, on PSE yesterday, I was comparing the um, Edge 30 Neo to the for 300 quid to the, um, the the Sony Xperia 5 Mark IV for 900 quid. Uh, in fact, it's 949 quid. And it's just comparable. I mean, Sony do it more classily, if you like, and the build quality is um, ahead and all those sorts of things. But in terms of feature for feature, you know, they're, 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 they're comparable. And um, I had a good, I've had a good time comparing those two and realising that you're quite right in what you say. People are going to go for these really well-specified, you know, 250 to 300 quid phones. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, it's exciting stuff. I, I look forward to seeing what they're going to do next. Um, and this is a very good option for anyone who's who's out there looking for something at the moment mm-hmm. without breaking the bank. Yeah. Palette.fm. Ted, I wish you hadn't have put this in the MeWe group yesterday <laughs> because I lost um, a, a good amount of time yesterday to <laughs> going and taking my... Uh, my scans of black and white photographs from my parents and grandparents' photo albums and colorizing them. Colorizing. Yes. Uh, so what what can you tell us about this process? What's well, new? Uh, first of all, I'd just like to blame um, This Week in Google. It wasn't my... I didn't find it. They did. And <laughs> they were wowing about it. So I thought, oh, I'll go and have a look. And sure enough, it's just brilliant. And it's free. How they do it for free, I've no idea. They must. There must be some way they monetize it. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in business. Anyway, you can just go to this website. I mean, do you remember the one that... Was it Kodak put one up? And you were allowed to have five... Five shots yeah. at it, and then you had to pay. Um, and, and it was not cheap, but this is free. You can do it as much as you want. And sure enough, I put some photographs up there of various black and white family old pictures. And it just does a brilliant job. It seems to work out exactly what was supposed to be where and what colour skin tones and colours of grass and colours of trees. And it, uh, it's just really, really clever. Um, and it's worth looking at, palette.fm. Um, I should go and use it and get it all done and download it before they start realising they can charge a fortune. Um, and they should do. They should charge for it because it's it's so good. 
Yeah. Well, um, I I tested the results as well. I, I, I took some of my mother's pictures of her, her mother, and um, colorized them, and then took them back to her and said, well, what do you think? And I think she was a wee bit underwhelmed um, because she said that a lot of the colors were wrong. There was one in particular she said, no, that, that dress was blue. It oh, was right. green here, <laughs> uh, and it, it's really not, it doesn't work as well in green. And looking at it, it was like, if it, if it's used sort of that color for the dress, then you would think that perhaps all the colors around might be incorrect as well. But she said there weren't. That's the way it looked. But that dress wasn't green. It was blue. And it was right. a, a very sort of pale blue as opposed to quite a vibrant green that they'd chosen for it. Well, how could um, they possibly know that? How could the, well, the I know, AI but, know that? But where, where I was then going away and, and colorizing some of my dad's old pictures, I don't have him to be able to run them by and say, is this appropriate? Uh, and I'm just looking at them going, was that tie he was wearing blue or was it green or yeah. was it red uh-huh. or was it black? We don't know. Right. Um, so you could be sort of, um, you know, uh, painting the wrong picture of, of what things were. You could, but, you know, at the end of the day, does, it probably doesn't matter that much. Uh, the, the one that I took of my, uh, sorry, the one that I, I put through the system of my dad sitting at his desk um, had wallpaper behind him and it was kind of green colour. And I don't know, he can't remember if it was green or not, But um, and I certainly wouldn't know, but it just didn't matter. The point is that it's it's picked a shade of wallpaper um, or, you know, wall-coloured paint or whatever that is in keeping with the general tone of the other colours in the room, which is quite likely to have been the case. But, yeah, I mean, if it's a dress, it doesn't sound a child tree, does it? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think, um, but it would be my mother who would obviously have loved that dress probably or, or loved that colour of dress and been disappointed that she can't see that colour of the dress again. You know, that that kind of thing would have affected her her outcome. And she was like, oh, that's wrong. <laughs> I reckon that's nitpicking. <laughs> it is, it is. But that, that, that's her. <laughs> she Fair likes enough. to do that. Um, yeah, no, it's it's it's, it's marvellous technology and, and uh, it, it really does give you a, a, a good idea. And I would I would actually argue that perhaps my mum is wrong because I remember hearing something years ago that said um, if you have a memory of something, every time you reflect back to that memory, you get something wrong. You know, you misremember yeah. something about it. So yeah. it is possible that she could misremember that the, that the dress was blue, even though she was adamant that it was blue. Um, yeah. There is a possibility that she may have forgotten that it was actually green. And they could be right, and she's wrong. And, you know, um, I, I should really just commit her to a home and get her section. <laughs> or indeed, she might misremember the fact that she had a dress on at all. Ah, uh, that's a horrible thought. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, back in the 1940s, all those nudists that ran about. Yeah, so. Right, okay, well, moving on to Qualcomm, because they have introduced a new S5 and S3 Gen 2 sound platform. Wait, sound platform? Oh, oh right, yeah, okay, sound platform. Yeah. Um, yes, the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform is, is the be-all and end-all of mobile processors. It does an awful lot. And uh, we have a new sound platform inside of it, and it does a few other things as well that we'll come back to. Um, what can you tell us about the sound loss or lossless movie, music streaming that you might well, get? Yeah, well, apparently on this this new chip, um, they have got the S5 and the S3. I'm not quite sure which does which, but they're talking about um, the um, um, it, it, putting spatial audio. Spatial audio seems to be the thing that everyone's going for. Um, and, you know, Sony um, kicked this off. I think Apple are on board with it and lots of other companies. Now, um, spatial audio is the way to go. And, and it is very impressive when you listen to it, I have to say. Um, with dynamic head tracking, whatever that is, um, mm-hmm. improved lossless music streaming 
and 48 millisecond latency between phone and earbud for lag-free gaming. We'll come to gaming in a minute. But, yeah, the music thing is, I, I think, largely um, enhancements to Bluetooth um, LE audio specifications and, and moving towards the um, broadly used spatial audio. And as I say, I don't know if you've had a listen to spatial audio on any devices, but I was very impressed with it. Were you, have you had a go at that? No, I haven't. I'm, okay. I'm interested too. You should. It's, it's Where very can I do that? You can do that with um, associated equipment, um, like, for example, some Sony gear. The headphones that you get with, you know, the, the XM5s or XM4s or whatever. And if you tune into the 360 reality audio services, um, you uh, you don't, we've we've talked about this before, and you, you don't get what they're claiming you get, but you do certainly get this spatial thing going on. And it's very impressive. Um, well, it is to my ears anyway, knackered as they may be. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there are other, if, you, if you've got an Apple device, you can do it with Apple headphones and and stuff. So it's out there. But, yeah, that's just one part of this new chipset, though, isn't it? It is, yeah, because uh, Oppo got in touch with me the other day and uh, told me about their their new Find X flagship, uh, which uh, the, is a smartphone that is going to rock this chip. And uh, the chip does ray tracing, um, which is <laughs> which is one of the most important things now. Uh, it's, it's, it's all in. Everybody loves ray tracing. Every new graphics card has to do it uh, because it gives you uh, more realistic looking graphics, essentially what it what it is it's, it's, it's sort of um, the the sun's rays and how it bounces off things and how it illuminates things depending on 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 the light source uh, and it tries to map it out it's it's very graphically intensive and it can cause people to melt if they try to do it um the new array of graphics cards are the ones that are toting all of this and uh, it seems that they're bringing it to mobile devices as well and they've demonstrated this little game called uh, Campground, which has over 2,000 physical models, 800,000 triangles, and close to 100 textures, um, and, and how the ray tracing works. And they, they show some screenshots of, uh, of, of it on and off, and how much more clarity and detail you get. And it, it just makes you think that, uh, yeah, this, this is what, we see in our eyes and take for granted and why computer graphics sometimes just can't capture realism uh, in our own eyes um, when we're looking at you know the the latest game it just doesn't quite look right ray tracing should help correct that and whilst it's still in its infancy uh, it's it's coming one of the weirdest things i thought they would they would actually really try and push it onto was a mobile phone uh, to play some gaming games with uh, larger scale games, uh, which I I still frequently have trouble believing that uh, th- that mobile phone gaming requires this level of graphical complexity, um, because I can't I, I have a look through the the Play Store and I can't find a game that's going to really rival something that I'm going to need ray tracing on there. <laughs> so um, it makes sense that Oppo ha- have a game here that that uh, they, they can try and get people on board with. Uh, but I, I don't see too many other companies coming up with with uh, other titles uh, to, to get people to be excited about it. Ted, will well, you be ray tracing on well, your mobile phone? It's interesting you should say that, because on a, another article, which we've linked, we'll link to in the show notes on Android Authority, they, they're basically saying the same as you've said, really. Smartphone ray tracing <coughs> won't scale like it does on consoles. Um, so this whole thing about bringing it to mobiles is very kind of premature. Um, it, it says that what we can say... Um, is that a, a smartphone chip designed for a sub five W whatever that is? What graphical power budget is not going to scale up to the performance levels of games consoles or mm. a PC graphics card? So essentially, what this this guy who's written this article for all of our, all of our Android is saying, sorry, um, Android Authority is saying that don't bother with it, certainly yet, because, as you say, there's no stuff out there that will make the most of it anyway, and because of the way that um, uh, mobile chipsets work, it's going to be nothing like you'll find on a console or um, you know, a, pr- a proper PC setup. So it, essentially what he's saying is that it's, it's all buzz stuff and, um, and you know, 
um, don't go there yet. Well, yeah, you see, over the years, you've had the likes of, I, I remember one of the first builds I ever did. I had essentially two graphics cards. I had my, whatever graphics card it was I put in to do the graphics. And then I had the Fizz, PhysX uh, card as well that would run in parallel with it. That would allow you to be able to have, um, you know, a physics based things going on inside your computer and it would do all the mathematical computations that allowed you to be able to play uh, physics based games and you could understand why that there was a real push for that to be developed because it didn't it didn't just um uh uh, be make games a bit more realistic it would it could it could be used in uh sort of vr and it could be used in in medical stuff as well that allowed people to be able to make scientific uh uh demonstrations on their computer uh to and and utilize the the chipset that's there so it it wasn't just gaming it wasn't all about gaming uh, whereas ray tracing i can't quite imagine how that is really going to enter into anything other than gaming or <laughs> CGI in movies and things yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, it, it's certainly, you know, the doctors aren't going to be going, oh, well, I'll be able to use this to get a better idea of how to do brain surgery. You know, it, it's it's not that kind of thing. So I, 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 it's entirely purely for gaming. And, and if we're spending time developing technologies purely for gaming, then I think we're losing our way a bit. Um, having games running on things that that were developed for something else um is is a is a neat thing to do and uh, it can it can sort of help uh, <laughs> help gaming in a bit of a sideline but uh but focusing on it as a as a main uh a, a main activity for gaming is it, it doesn't really serve much of a purpose hmm uh, it's it's a, it's a weird one. I'd I'd rather I I haven't thought about it entirely to try and quantify my words here at all. But um, uh, yeah, it's we, we should be we should be trying to do more for furthering mankind than actually fo- spending time focusing on developing technologies purely for gaming. Although, as you've said a few times on the show, gaming is getting huge, and when something is getting huge. Um, resources go towards it, don't they? Um, even though it might not do anything particularly for anything else, if it serves gamers, they can make money out of people buying games and buying systems and buying phones, ultimately, that do make a difference. And you can um, use ray tracing to, to, to see and hear whatever you know difference. Then they're going to they're gonna do that, aren't they? Well, yes, uh, but even all the criticism at the moment of of old mr musk buying twitter for 44 billion dollars that that's an amount of money that could have solved world hunger and then some and yet he's he's quite happy to spend it on twitter and and d- debatably run it into the ground um which it it smacks in the face of where we actually are as a, as a race. Sorry, sorry, I'm not going to talk about this anymore. It's it's a bit <laughs> damning and unfair. Uh, yeah, okay, something a bit more fun. What can we talk about that's more fun? I'm pressing myself. Uh, okay, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Where can we go with that? Tell me. Oh, this, this is this is fun. Um, it was <laughs> an article published by Rock Paper Shotgun, and it shows the console of the latest version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And inside, the micro, they put a little Easter egg inside it. In the cockpit of the, um, the aeroplane, they put the original version of the... Which version is it? It's the... the it Microsoft like four, doesn't it? Yeah, they they've actually put a um, a screen in the in the in the cockpit of the, the, the old version of the flight simulator running, so that the pilot can play it while he's <laughs> flying the, <flight> the plane. <laughs> it's, it was just a funny Easter egg, really. And I thought it was quite good fun, and um, you know these coders at Microsoft are having a right old laugh with it, I think. And um, yeah, do you remember playing that one, that that old one? Well, um, the, the, no, they're saying here in the article that it is that it's the original Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah. But looking at it, it just I had four when I started getting into it. Actually, the only copy of it I've ever had is four. 
um, and that looks exactly like it. Oh, no, it is. If you look at the top there, it's got a green button by FS4, so you can change it down to FS1. Oh, I see. Right, FS2. okay. They're allowing you to play one, two, three, or four. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. That, mm. <laughs> That's crazy. For all the years that we couldn't actually run it on hardware, um, because, you know, yeah. Windows 95 came along and made this, or maybe it did run Windows 95, I can't quite remember, but mm. Vista came along and you couldn't play Flight Simulator 4. Now you can play it inside of Flight Simulator t- t- uh, t- uh, 12. No. What's the latest um, one? I don't know. You can you can, you can can play it through Steam, and it's 60 quid, apparently, to get the pass to play it. Um, I, I, I used to play Flight Simulators, but what I realised was that Clever as they were back in the day, I mean, not, not nothing like they are now, no doubt. I just got bored with them in mm. ten minutes of yeah, all right, you're flying this plane around and looking down at the landscape, and you know, I, it just got boring. A bit like you know, watching um, uh, horse racing or something. It's ultimately, it's just dull and boring. Anyway, that's just <laughs> me. I'm sure other gamers love flight simulators. In fact, I know someone who bought. A, a brand new PC just so that they could get that was Kev. Hello, Kev. Kev Wright. He bought a new PC just so that he could get the latest version of Microsoft's um, flight simulator. Um, wow! And, th- and then he um, got fed up with it in no time as well. So I think that um, that is a danger. But yeah, people must love it. Yeah, no, I, I remember Flight Simulator Four. I, I there was a, you could do San Francisco and you could fly under Golden Gate Bridge, which is something I used to do quite frequently um, because that happened in Star Trek Four, um, and then that was all I remember doing with it. <laughs> yeah, aside from getting frustrated and turning it off whenever I couldn't take off on a particular plane, because yeah. you, you're young enough and you just want to just fly around. Yeah. So you start off in the air and then crash. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that, that, it's it, what's interesting is to see how it's evolved from those you know Evercade style flight simulators, which are really really pixelated and rubbish, to what they can do now, and the fact that you've got to buy new hardware to even consider running it. Um, so you know someone is out there making money out of this, and there must be lots of people that enjoy doing it. Yeah, I was having a look through one of those uh, retro abandonware websites and uh, came across a game that I I had forgotten about entirely since I played it um, on my Amstrad 1640, which was a game called Snow Strike. And uh, I just I watched someone play it on YouTube and, and the theme music rattled through me and I couldn't believe how good they were at it. I was just rubbish at it. But I, <laughs> I, I always had aspirations to try and get good at it, but... Uh, didn't have the the time or the willpower to actually do it. I wanted to go out and play with my mates on mm. the streets. Stickball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, move, uh, moving on to uh, flap your trap about an app. Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, Android phones will soon be able to stream audio directly to Windows 11 ah, PCs they through listen your to me. phone link. They listen to me. I've been banging on about this for ages. Ever since I started using PhoneLink, um, and even before it was called PhoneLink, I was saying that with a DEX system, you plug your phone in with a USB-C, and you can play some music, and it goes through your default Windows um, speakers, and it passes through the audio. And I kept banging on about that, and someone at Microsoft said, oh yeah, we better sort Ted out with this. So they've done it now, and they've allowed you to... Um, well, it's not quite as good as plugging in a cable because it's streaming it um, over the, the, the Wi-Fi um, to your computer or, or via Bluetooth. Um, so it, it remains to see to, to be seen how good any lag might be if you're streaming video. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I think it's a, a good move forward. You can stream your audio, and um, it plugs that gap that was very present in well apart from decks and ready for um and one other i found one other oh yeah it was the oppo system that streamed audio um what's that called pc connect i think it was called and that streamed audio but that was over bluetooth not by cable whereas the motorola and the samsung did it with the cable but anyway i think that's good even if it's um not going to be used by many people do you think you might use it 
I'm trying to think if I've ever needed to. Um, <laughs> I, I tend to put, sit down and, and turn on YouTube music or something like that on my desktop and just play it that yeah, way. I know, I know. But for people that are really, really, truly being road warriors that don't have that stuff on their desktop or who have not got a connection, then you can use your phone, the music that is stored on your phone, to play through your computer. Amazing. Yes. Let's move on. All right. Um, well, there's something else about how they're also going to have a continuity browser history uh, with Samsung browser as well, uh, because this is a sort of Samsung oh, yeah. focused update. I, I, is it? Do they have a deal with Samsung on Phone Link or something yeah. like that, where they bring those features first. Yeah, they do. Yeah, Samsung and Microsoft are in bed with each other, and this mm. this comes from the um, the news. I think we mentioned it last week or the week before, where the Samsung browser on phones is now able to sync your um your your history and your your con your um your 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 data with the browsing history with your um with chrome and so they've obviously taken that a stage further and i don't know where chrome comes into it but that's what i think that's what it's about all right okay well, moving on to the next story, because TechCrunch have uh, have recommended uh, a credible alternative to Google and Amazon, and it comes in the form of of a crap price comparison tool from Klarna, <laughs> um, where you can go in and if you're looking for something, uh, you can search for it, and then they'll give you slightly higher prices than you would find through Google and Amazon. All in the method of selling you something on sort of higher purchase or or taking out some sort of... Yeah, silly um, loan or whatever to to pay it off. Ted, have you had a go with this uh, rip off? No, I don't think it's software? out there yet. I don't. I'm not, I, I think it's coming. Um, no, it's there. Is it? I've installed it. Oh, yep. have you? Okay. Well, you, you you're a better place to to tell us all about it. Then I thought that the fact that that the whole um, the the whole Klarna thing. Um, was nothing to do with this. This is a completely separate branch of what they were doing. That they they bought up. Who is it? They bought up um, Price Runner. So they bought Price Runner in a one billion dollar deal, <laughs> and then right. and then they've 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 opened a new branch of Klarna that doesn't deal with um, giving people loans through various websites that we've all seen, um, but it deals with a shopping front. And, the, and I, I think I agree with you. I don't see how they can possibly hope to um, com, com, uh, uh, to to um, go up against Google with this, because it's it, I, I don't know. Maybe it, it, you need to test it if you've got it installed and see if do some comparison stuff. I did this morning. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I've, I've got Amazon open in front of me. Yeah. I have selected a random product. In this case, it is a raw deal. On 4K Ultra HD, it's currently tw- uh, 19.99 on Amazon, right. and in the Z shops, you can get it for 20 pounds and 77 p. So it's it's more expensive to buy from the Z shops. So if I go to Clarna and type in raw deal, uh, yeah, and we search for that, we get top products. Raw deal on DVD for a fiver. Raw deal as part of the Blu-ray uh, Schwarzenegger series for fourteen pounds, uh, and three books called Raw Deal. So it doesn't actually have that <laughs> Ultra HD. Well, we'll we'll try something else. Let's Say try for example, simpler. okay, uh, something that's something high value. We'll go for a Pixel Watch. Uh, oh no, because there's well, no I, deals, is there? <laughs> The 6900 XT. That's a graphics card. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. So here we have the the Sapphire Toxic Radeon RX 6900 XT air-cooled graphics card. Okay. So if we're going to go for, we'll test Google this time. Sapphire Toxic Radeon uh, RX 6900 XT air cooled. Go to Google Shopping, and the best price they come up with is seven hundred and seventy nine pounds and ninety nine pence. And good old Klarna 
are offering us the lowest price of £998. <laughs> so we'll so, stop right there. So it's Thank crap anyway. <laughs> yes. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go to my original uh, uh, evaluation of it when I was reading out the headline and, and just say at the moment I wouldn't bother, but maybe come back to it in a while once they've perhaps attracted more people to sell the stuff of. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad I didn't install it. Yeah, I did instead. <laughs> Anything for a good Black Friday deal. Yeah. Okay, so YouTube Shorts are bringing affiliate shopping features for Shorts, which I concern. I'm a bit concerned about because it just means Shorts is going to get full of people trying to peddle their wares. Um, Ted, what can you tell like, us about this? Like they are on TikTok. They're trying really hard to... There's two stories here. This is the first of two um, about Google trying to, to um, emulate what TikTok are doing. And this one is... Yeah, if you if you scroll through TikTok, you can see that you have these people the, that do the um, um, influencing and they put links on the page to people for people to go and buy the products. I'm amazed that Google, to be honest, haven't already done this and that YouTube hasn't got this um because you think you know google the advertising giant would be straight onto this but they seem to have taken their time with it so that's the first one and, and the second one is that um youtube and google are trying to um encourage uh, people away from tiktok as well by putting their creations on youtube youtube shorts by having done a deal with um copyrighted music um, various create, creators and, and, and holders of licensing for music. At the moment, apparently, I didn't know this, but apparently you're allowed to use 15 seconds of um, any licensed song in a YouTube um, short um, within your minute of um, upload. But apparently they're going to increase that from between 30 and 60 seconds um, for most tracks, inverted commas. So some of them will still remain at 15 seconds, but it will tell you um, when you get there if that's... And, and again, this is something that I believe that TikTok are doing and, and Google are just saying, right, we need to catch up with this because um, we want everyone to come to YouTube and not go to TikTok. Now, just last night, I was scro I did a comparison scrolling through now i know that it's hard to do a comparison because shorts and tiktok get good or bad based on your usage and it works out algorithms so unless you constantly use them it's quite hard to compare the two but i have to say that i by far enjoyed the experience on tiktok still much much better than on youtube shorts YouTube Shorts was just... And Google have had my data for such a long time. Much, much longer than TikTok have got. Um, but they were serving me up stuff on TikTok that I wanted to see. They'd learn quickly. And I think that Google have just got the YouTube Shorts algorithms not right yet. And it's just really surprising. Um, so, yeah, two things um, YouTube, Google are trying to catch up with TikTok on. Hmm, Yeah. So I, I'm still uh, I'm always the pessimist when it comes to licensing music and using licensed music in any video. Um, having in the past, I have had YouTube videos that have been flagged for copyright despite using royalty free music. Right. Because at one, st you know, back whenever I used to work uh, in, I used to work on cruise ships. I had a, a huge array of royalty free music that I could put on the videos that were being sold on the ship right. and I brought all of them home and there was a couple of tracks that I thought were really good and I used them for early YouTube videos that I had mm -hmm. uh, that I'd made and they went for a couple of years then all of a sudden you know after 10 years of them sitting on YouTube I got a copyright strike and it was like what for this royalty free music it's like no it, it's changed someone's copyrighted it I'm like how who when and I had to take the video down. It was like, flip. Yeah. That, that, what, what a, how, how does that happen? You know, And is, is that going to happen to people who put up their YouTube shorts and want to leave them there for as long as possible? Because they're still skimming a couple of cents or pennies off it over the years. And then eventually, you know, in four years' time, this deal is going to lapse. And then all the music that's been used there um, is going to have to be deleted. So we'll just u lose huge amounts of content. Hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm concerned about those sorts of things, and they keep me awake at night. I cry a lot. 
Isn't this is one of the departments that they're saying that will go with um, cutbacks, though, aren't they? So mm. um, people looking out, or, um, or or engineers writing algorithms to watch out for people doing this stuff, um, will become less and less, and it will be more of a free for all, and you can put up what you like. I know that last week I was watching um, this week in Google, and they put something up which they weren't supposed to do, and Leo Laporte said, "I expect we'll be get, I expect we'll get taken down for this." And then um, they five minutes later they did another one. It was a piece of music by somebody I can't remember who it was, and I expect we'll be taken down for this. But no, they weren't. Whereas previously, I think they're more like you were more likely to get taken down for those kinds of things. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's a. It, it, it's still a wild west. It's still worrying, and if, and, if, and if people are trying to, you know, effectively raise a business, they they need to be making sure that they get it right. And you're better off getting some sort of copyrighted music yourself beforehand, yeah. or and going with that. or playing your own. Get your keyboard out. <laughs> <laughs> your Hammond organ, yes. or is that some sort of segue into hark back? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, now we'll find out what happens with that in years to come when people's when all this content starts disappearing. And I have to say, I won't be, I won't miss all those videos that are currently sitting on YouTube with "Try Nord VPN" or, or "This video is sponsored by Surfshark" or some other scammy VPN crap. Have you seen? That we've, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> have, you, have, no, you're okay. have you seen the the the, the mad bloke that Flossie Carter's hooked up with to demonstrate the audio of his phones? And so Flossie Carter's this YouTuber that does. Um, he's the one with the, the the white shoes cat, and he's really funny. He's really entertaining to to watch and listen to. Um, anyway, when it comes to testing the photographs on this phone, uh, sorry, um, speakers, he he runs this video. This kind of this nutty bloke. I can't remember his name now. Doing. Have you seen it? It's <laughs> it's just really no, really I funny. I haven't watched him in a while. Yeah, have, have a look at it, and you'll see it. He he cuts to this bloke who's doing this um like DJing act. It's just really really funny. He's a complete nutcase. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll and, have and to look the that. point of the link of that was that um obviously Flossie Carter has decided to you know get his mate to do it and not ever get into this kind of um, problem with licensing for any music he might use on his videos. Yes, yeah, that, that, I think that is that's that's a big problem going forward. We're going to see a lot of people stumbling there. Yeah. But yeah, I I haven't seen Flossie Carter in ages. <laughs> I, I am subscribed, but it, it, the really algorithm funny. just doesn't throw his videos at me. Oh yeah, right, I just think he's really funny. He's just so entertaining, yeah. and he and he laughs at himself. And he he's not he, by his own admission, he's not on. Uh, he, he often is an expert you know he's he's not he he says about himself that he's you know a, a an ordinary user of the the gear and what you what i tell you is what i find sort of thing very yeah. re- very refreshing is it's a really good watch yeah yeah oh, i'll have to go through some of the stuff I haven't seen it in a long time all right um well, i wanted to throw in one thing about an app that i'd noticed um <laughs> with what i was doing uh with palette fm and that i've noticed that Google Photos now lists your albums in alphabetical order, uh, which is something I've been hoping that they would do for many years. Uh, whenever you put an album or a, a photograph onto Google Photos and you go to share it to an album uh, or add it to an album, sorry, uh, it, it shows you a list of your albums and you haven't been able to type into that album list uh the name of the album if you knew knew what it was but it would seem that it would come up in a sort of random uh selection though you would have your most recently used at the top and then it would i think it would just continue with recently used so if you hadn't used an album in a long time you could be scrolling for ages and because they weren't sort of alphabetical or anything you you could skip past it easily and uh, carry on down toward the bottom and then not know where the album was and then have to scroll back up again and then eventually find it. But now they they have alphabetized their all their albums or all your albums so that as long as you have an idea of what it's called, you should be able to find it a good bit easier. And I can't believe that from a search giant, it's taken this long for that to be updated. Especially the fact that Add to, you cannot start typing in the name of the album. 
So you still have to scroll down. You can't search for it in the Search Giants photograph album collection. Uh, Amazon allow you to do that. Amazon have actually updated their Photos app uh, this last week with with new features like that. And you can search for the album that you need uh, to put stuff into. So I I still can't understand why Google Photos is so rubbish whenever it comes to album organisation. Have you noticed this at all? Don't use them. In fact, when I saw you put this in the show notes this morning, um, I went and had a look at my Google Photo albums, and there's about ten in there, but half of them are empty, and and the other half are ones that I've um, put together to send to Steve for um, looking at in PSC, and I've completely forgotten are there. Um, I, I think that the thing is that I've you know you're talking about the search giant. Well, the search giant uses it didn't ever want to do albums and 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 folders, and it, it kicked against that for so long because what you're supposed to do in Google Photos is just search on what you want to find. So if you want to find pictures of trees, you just type in trees and it serves you up a bunch of trees. Um, And if you played the game right, you put in there a bunch of photographs of your mum's name and all your mum's photographs come up. The search giant bit is, is not about albums, I don't think. It's about just using it as, a, a, you know, a bit like... um. A bit like Gmail, you know, you can use labels in Gmail, but Google were never really very sold on the idea of labels. They just want you to search on what you want to find. It's all there in a big pot anyway. Whatever you want to label it or album it or whatever else it is, it's just sat in this big pot. So just use the search engine and search for what you want. Know what I mean? I thought you were a librarian. You were proud of the fact that you were a librarian. <laughs> I used to be. And loved organisation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to be. And my mum um, really hates the way that Google do this. She's with you. She wants things to be in folders, like a Windows-type way. Um, yeah. And, and Google are just trying to get away from that. They're saying, you don't need folders. You don't need labels. You don't need albums. Just go with the search. Whatever you want to find, tell us what you want to find, and we'll find it for you. And I find but that But what that if works you don't well. know exactly? You can't wordify what you're looking for. Well, go to night school for some English lessons. <laughs> well, one of the things I use uh, Google Photos for is to remember things that happened on a day. So I will go to a date to find out things that happened on a day. You've got a date thing down the right-hand side. You can scroll to the date. Yes, but that, that, that's me using some of Google's things uh, some of the the information that's there but i don't always know exactly the date but uh, you know I, i'm not able just to search for what happened on that day and I, I can't enter in friday and it'll show me all the things that were taken on a friday which friday it's a bit of a long shot that is that would, well uh, so many results <laughs> that would give you no, every I, friday I throughout history well yes but you you may not be able to accurately search for something uh, Imagine going into YouTube Music and thinking, I want to listen to that song that I heard last week. I don't know who it was by, but I want to try and find it. You're not going to be able to easily do that. I know you can go into your history and look at all that kind of stuff, but I'm trying to to analyse this from a Google Photos point of view, and that was the best example that came into my head. Mm. Probably isn't a good example of right, okay. I'll just, just move on. I've just, <laughs> no, in the search engine in Google Photos, I've just put in... 12th of June, one two T H space J U N E, and sure enough, I've up come as a as a come a list up of all the photographs I've ever taken on, on any 12th of June throughout history. What more do you want? Oh yeah, I'd love to go and see that time we went to Disney on Ice. Okay, so you type in Disney, Disney on Ice. On ice. No results. Oh, yeah. no. When did I go to get in? Um, I, see, what I could have done, I should have taken all those pictures and put them in an album called Disney on Ice. Well, I, I, I think that... I, I, You see, I, re, I just rely on the search engine. And for me, all right, I'm not a huge photograph taker anymore. I used to be back in the day, as we know, but I'm not now. And if I was, maybe I would approach it differently. But for me, anything I want to find, I just search for, and I tend to find it. Worrying thing is, there's actually an album called Disney on Ice. Oh, I've, I've spelt Disney incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. All right. I must have done it at the time. Yeah. 
But uh, let us know, dear listener, what you reckon about this whole Google Photos thing. Because unlike Gareth, I just think the search engine works really, really well um, whenever I want to find anything. Gareth disagrees, along with my mum. He wants folders and labels. And No, but I, I like albums. That gives you another option, and it's very easy for them to do. All I want is whenever you're adding it to an uh, to an album that you can type in the name of the album and search from from it because if you have a million albums it'll take you forever to track it down yeah okay (laughs) you're using it wrong (laughs) (laughs) and you used to be a librarian now you're just this reckless google (laughs) (laughs) okay uh so what what's new in chrome corner oh scraping the barrel i think we'll have to scrap this section because it's a, the second week of scraping the barrel. Material U for Chromebooks um, just showed up in the Canary channel. I can't see it yet because I'm not using the Canary channel. But um, those that, that um, are on their Chromebooks will be able to see it. And it's very pretty. It's very Material U. It's very, they're, they're trying to, to change Chrome OS into, into um, you know, Android. And, and it looks very, very pretty. Lovely rounded corners to all the graphics. Pastel shades and lots of theming options and all the rest of it yeah it looks really nice i'm sure that when that arrives on our chromebooks we'll be have great fun playing with it and you'll be able to have a pink theme going on or a green theme going on and it'll be lovely and the other one was um the the, the, more about turning your chromebook into a phone they're going to um, add some sounds on it some some system sounds like you get on a phone so um when your phone um is uh sorry when your chromebook it starts up it's going to make a sound when you shut it down it will make a sound and um you know another uh, and other um um sound events based on um based on system um ac- actions and so forth so um you'll be able to do that and again just like a phone and hopefully you'll be able to turn them off as well i hope they're not going to just turn them on and everyone just gets them <laughs> <laughs> yeah have you listened to them um, yeah. No, no, yeah. no, I haven't. No, no. They're all the same, but they've got a different oh, yeah. kind of blip blop in them. Oh yeah, so they have. Let me see if I can. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't know you could listen to them. I must pay more attention. Oh yeah, they're all the <laughs> same, aren't they? Oh no, one. The, the last one, the low battery warning one, is different. But the the charging near full battery, charging medium full battery, and charging low battery all have the same yeah. sort of theme to them. But there's a a, a a sound at the start. This is a podcast. I could try to capture them and play them. Ooh, that'd be very let, clever. Uh, well, I'll, 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 let's prepare for this. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to add another R onto my editing <laughs> section today. By uh, let's see, we're we're an hour and a half into the show. Uh, and I'll come back, and this is what it sounds like, charging a near-full battery. And this is what it sounds like, charging a medium-full battery. This is what it sounds like, charging a low battery. And this is the low battery warning. Aha, that last one was different, you see. Yes, it it was. And uh, (laughs) if you're still with us... um, Hurrah, because, ah, I can download them. Brilliant. Yeah, very good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, they, they, they just constantly trying to make um, Chromebooks more like um, more like phones, aren't they? Particularly with this Material U theming, which is which is really nice. I do approve of Material U. One of the reasons I, I generate back tools using Pixels, because it's very, very nice. Um, do, is the resign currently... What? Whenever you plug it in to charge and you're using it, no. does it make sense? No. No, not a Chromebook. I thought it did. Do. No. Do. Don't be so stupid. No. Oh, hang on a second, I've got a Chromebook <laughs> aside me. I can put this to the test and work out whether or not it said salmon talking shit. Um, <laughs> right. uh, oh, uh, good grief. I have a charger. Uh, mm, oh, I moved it over there. Ah, oh, bum. Right, Okay. We'll have to. So, uh, something else to edit in. <laughs> no, we'll have to conduct that uh, at a later date. Ted, you can do some analysis over that over the course of the week. That can be your homework. No, I know the answer already. <laughs> yes, that's because you've just made it up. Right, <laughs> moving into Hark Back, the, P- the player piano. 
Yeah, the player piano or the pianola, as um, it is also called, is we in the nineteen. Travel back in time with me. When I was a child in the nineteen sixties, we had um, a friend up the road, an old couple who were really, really good piano players, and they had this piano, which was a pian pianola or a player piano, and it made the the fun. Um, the the fun task of being able to create music someone else's job so this piano try to just for those that don't know what this is the piano you put a roll of paper inside the piano in the front of the piano there's a window normally and you stick it inside and put it on the roller and then at the bottom of the piano where the where you normally get your pedals there are two big fat pedals and you pump them you you press them one each side left right left right left right and that turns the paper inside okay and on this paper and this is a bit that i was trying to understand how it worked and i i, I still can't get to the, the bottom of it how it works on this roll of paper it's got holes perforations and somehow it then knows the system the the very complicated mechanics inside the piano knows that where those holes are is where it's got to strike one of the hammers on the appropriate string and this works absolutely brilliantly well so back in the day that what they used to do was they get they used to get these famous pianists who played um tunes really really well they recorded them somehow onto these paper rolls by punching perforations in them they sell these piano rolls to people with these pianos like our old friends up the road um and then you can just sit there and play the the tune um exactly exactly like the the famous great pianist did and it sounds exactly the same it replicates perfectly how they did it on the day that it was recorded recorded in inverted commas um so in trying to understand how this worked um i was trying to think of it in terms of um, music boxes where you had these little prongs that there's a there's a, a rotating drum and that the, it had little um, um, uh, it protrusions out of the drum and as the drum turned round it plucked each of these little kind of um, fork thingies that made the right sounds as it went round but this one has got holes in the paper and so I just don't know I've I've looked at some really complicated diagrams of how it works and I still don't get it so um, anyone that does do feel free to um, tell me how it works but anyway the point was that I remember this so fondly from my childhood and I would just as soon as we went to visit these friends um I was only about five at the time, and I just made a beeline to the piano and went, well, quick, quick, get that. open up the door at the front. I was like, yeah, start, start pressing these pedals, and they must have got sick of me. And if you, one of the games you could play was that if you, if you press the pedals less quickly, then the the whole thing just slowed down and the tone got lower. And if you went as quickly as you could, it speeded it all up, and it was just great fun. And it was, uh, I I haven't seen a pianola uh, ever since i put a link in the show notes to the um to the uh the wiki page which demonstrates exactly what i'm talking about so people will be able to look at that but um i was fascinated by this i love playing the piano anyway because we had our own piano and i learned how to play the piano um all forgotten now well mostly forgotten now um but to go up there and hear this thing in action was just great and I don't know if you've looked at these mechanical diagrams that I've tried to link to, but I just I just couldn't get how it worked. Um, have you got any ideas? Well, I'm just I'm looking at the it looks like a punch card kind of operation thing, which, yeah. which obviously held data um, to to be able to relay onto computers. And perhaps either this came before the punch card disk system that was all the rage in the, I don't know, 60s and 70s, maybe even 50s and 40s. Um, th- th- this might have been um, a-, a precursor to that or perhaps just used the same kind of idea. If you blow up the... Or is it, the, you, is it you, like those little music boxes you get, like in Mad Max 2, that he gives to the feral kid and he, he winds it round and it, 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 it plinks and plonks? Yeah, that's what I was talking about just now. That that's what I'm saying. It's not. If you if you go to the wiki page and blow up the photograph, which is the one on the right hand side, kind of halfway down. If you blow up that photograph, you you can see the roll. And on the um, do you see the photograph I'm talking about? 
no. Uh, oh yes, yes, oh, yes. Okay. Go, 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 yeah. Go, yeah. It, well, if you if you click on that and blow it up, you can see that, that on that roll, the, behind the paper, there's a series of dots, holes oh, in yeah. this kind of gold-coloured um, thingy, and that paper is passing over the top, and you can see where the holes line up with the holes as it goes past, and somehow it mechanically. There's no electronics going on here. It mechanically triggers some hammer to to strike the the, the, the I don't know I, I just don't know how it works and I'd like it'd be really interesting to find out uh back to you on, on the right hand side of that there's there's words is that for the person to sing along uptight and everything is quiet uh, yeah. quiet for the night yeah, when yeah, yeah. sudden well, what happens next if you've got the window open, you'll be able to read that, of course. And while it's, you can shut the window. Well, on the one that that we had, you could. Well, we didn't have it. I mean, our friends had it. But um, yeah, I I hadn't noticed that. Yeah, there is words on it. You're right. Okay, that's interesting. I I, I was not aware of these. I do remember in, <laughs> um, in the Muppet movie. Uh, Paul Williams is sitting playing one of these and Fozzie oh. gets involved in a bar fight and gets thrown in through the window in a in the piano and then pops up and tells a joke. Oh, right. So maybe you should watch that as a bit of research. Yeah. I just, I would just, I would quite like to understand the mechanics of how it works. And I can't, I, during this week, I've been, I was looking at various online resources to try and get my head around it. And I just can't see how it works. It, it's not like those plinking things you were just describing yeah. um, in a music box. It was, it, it's some, it's clearly something different. Anyway, the the point was, in terms of the hardback, I haven't seen one of these since the 1960s. I guess someone must still have one. Um, and it looks like, you know, well, I know, I know that it was great fun to play with, and you could replicate the the stars of the day playing beautiful piano pieces. And there's an, a nice, <laughs> there's a, a record called Pianola, Helps Dad Relax, and he's sitting in front <laughs> of it, smoking his pipe. Yeah. And now that he's got oh, home from work. Oh, look, there's, a, there's, a, there's an electronic one now, the Yamaha... Disclavier, the Yamaha Disclavier. Oh. I wonder how that works. Oh, that's very the badly researched. Piano La Spotify edition as well. Excellent, right? Okay. Well, that, yeah. that was. I, I'm. I'm intrigued now. I've never heard of this before, um, and I probably won't hear of it again. Excellent, but it was nice. <laughs> nice for you to have some fond memories of a pianist plucking your holes. Yeah, there was. <laughs> it was. It was just really, really good fun. As a child, I loved it. There was another friend of ours that had this um, organ, Uwe Misses, mm-hmm. um, and that worked slightly differently because you had to you had to press the pedals left and right to get the the air to go into the mechanism inside, and then once you started ped- pressing the pedals, you could then play the ch- the notes on the piano. That was good fun as well. It didn't play itself; you had to play it, but. Um, in order to get the sound out through the air system, you had to keep pumping these 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 pedals. Uh, careful now! <laughs> if you say pumping your organ on here, we might get taken off YouTube. <laughs> right. Oh, anyway, darn, great I just did. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Okay. Well, that that that's nice. Uh, if if any of our listeners do in fact remember these things and can settle Ted's mind and how they actually work, do let us know. Send us an email yeah. or. Or send us a link or something like that. All right. Uh, moving into the bargain basement where there are nice things available. And it's it, some of it is Black Friday, so some of it may not be available next week or after Monday or whatever. But they're there now. And that's the important thing as we record this. Isn't Monday supposed to be Cyber Monday or is that gone now? Well, I haven't, I haven't heard it too much. Uh, and a lot of these Black Friday deals seem to be lasting a week. So, um, oh, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Um, and having a look at some of the keeper structures on some of the deals, it's quite difficult to actually find ones that are genuinely good deals that haven't just sort of put their prices up a few months ago when now they're bringing them down to where they yeah. normally are. 
One one that doesn't comply with that definitely mm-hmm. because we saw it we saw it come in we saw it released and it's been 140 quid since it was released is the that um, 140 watt output um, anchor power bank which was my first pick it's now reduced by 40 quid to 99.99. And um, it's it's a really nice looking. We've covered this before on the show, so we won't go into details. But it's got a twenty four thousand milliamp power and um, power bank in it, and you can, as I say, charge out for someone that needs to charge out quickly and powerfully to get a laptop going or a or a phone that can handle the 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 the, the input. One hundred and forty watts you can get out of it. So nifty little thing that it is. Yeah, and also it's new as well, so it hasn't had a chance to be exploited by Amazon. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, next up is the Logitech MX Master 2S wireless mouse. Um, mm. This is not as good as the 3S wireless mouse, which is much more expensive, uh, but this is reduced in price from £100 down to 39.99, and it's a very mm. nice, very comfortable piece of hardware um, that uh, I have... I've, well, I've, I've lived with Logitech Master Mice for quite some time now. I haven't entertained anything else for a while because they still are the be all and end all of mice and looking at Keepa it's uh, it's rarely been below 60 quid this is the lowest it's been in at least three weeks very good I like that and also the one that I ended up with which is if you that there's a link above to the Logitech MX Anywhere S, uh, 2S because um, it seats my hand size better for some reason that's still Twenty nine ninety nine. That was reduced from um, eighty five quid, and that's still a bargain as well. Mm. So if you're if you're there looking at Gareth's pick, you might have a look at that one as well. Yeah, it's not actually appearing above it for mine. Okay, yeah. but that's twenty nine ninety nine. Um, so yeah, lots of Logitech, and they'll all work now with my new setup, <laughs> so that it doesn't keep stalling and spluttering. Yes. Yeah. Right. Sony Xperia Five Mark Four. Um, is 300 quid off. No, it's not. It's 250 quid off. No, it's not. It's... How much is it? Yeah, 250. Um, And that is available on Amazon and on Sony's UK website. Um, 799 quid reduced from 949. And there's also... I know it's last year's model, um, but the Xperia 1 Mark III is also 699 reduced from 1199 so that's even more of a saving if you can live with last year's model and not need the absolute latest there's not i mean there's a, there are differences between the mark 3 and 4 but not huge so that's still a very very good buy if you're um, a, a pair of picks from Sony Xperia's yeah, that's quite right. That's very nice. Very nice indeed. Now, uh, Fire HD tablets are something that I don't know very much about, but I do think that they are uh, the ones to go for whenever it's Black Friday and you're looking for a tablet, especially of the Amazon mix, uh, and they always get dis- decent discounts around this time of year. So the Fire HD 10 tablet, which has a 10.1-inch 1080p full HD display, only has 32 gigabytes of RAM, but it's 80 quid which is down from 150 And you can also pay that in five monthly payments for £16 a month. So can I. So can you. Well, I think everyone can with with Amazon's <laughs> own ones. You can also buy it. Yeah. Oh, well, that's the one with ads. You can get it without ads mm. at, uh, oh, it's eighty nine ninety nine. Mm. So And the 64 gigabyte version, how much is that? 129 Yeah. So there's there's a there's a lot to haggle with, but uh, that that mm. top one there, the the one two nine with sixty four and without ads, still works out at twenty six pounds a month for five months, which is pretty mm. good. That's only a ten or extra yeah. a month for a whole lot more. Exactly, wonder and lovely colours, absolutely, very very nice indeed. Um, and sticking with um, uh, Amazon stuff, Kindle is next. Um, I've linked to a page that's got is full of um, Kindles at the moment, and they're all like twenty to thirty percent off for Black Friday, um, and all of those are um, five months to pay as well. Um, so yeah, have a look at that page if you're in for a Kindle. Actually, the little blue one um, is really really cute. They, the, the 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 cheapest Kindle of them all, um, the very basic one. Um, they've done in two colours, in black and in blue. Um, the apparently the, the the black one is more eco-friendly because of the materials they've used, but the blue one's really cute. 
And they made it smaller and smaller. And it just would fit in a front jeans pocket now if you want a Kindle that you can also carry around with you. Very, very nice indeed. What's the collective pronoun for a load of Kindles? Um, it must be a swoop. A swoop of Kindles? That's quite nice. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Because okay, we, well, we don't do collective pronouns for things anymore, do we? You know, A murder of crows. Well, yeah, yeah. You get uh, for all kinds of different animals, but you don't get a collective pronoun for a bunch of Lenovo tablets or for a bunch of uh, uh, Apple phones. Should we not start coming up with new exciting pronouns? Oh, it can be your project for the week. Okay. Actually, I've just noticed that the basic Kindle is not in this list. Why isn't the basic Kindle the little? Um, that it's not on sale. The little the ba- the basic one. Maybe they're the getting cads. Oh yes, it is. They just didn't hurt. It. Oh no, no, hang on a minute. No, no, it's not. It's the only one that's not in the list. Um, the all new Kindle twenty twenty two in blue or black eighty four ninety nine seventeen pound a month for five months. Um, but it's not on Black Friday deal. That's interesting. That oh, is. Yeah, they, they, they've broken their own rule there, or not rule, yeah. but. Uh, their own trend. Mm-hmm. Okay, speaking of trend, it's not quite trend, but it's transcend. It sounds like trend. Um, they are doing a 64 gigabyte micro SD card, uh, A1, U1, uh, Type 1, 95 megabytes per second, 45 megabytes per second type thing. Uh, class 10 memory card for smartphones, digital cameras, Nintendo consoles. Uh, without an SD card adapter to clutter the postage, um, it's down in price from seven pounds eighty to four pounds forty four in a Black Friday deal. I think that's a that's a cracker. Get a load of those. Yeah. Stick them in your security cameras or anything that takes a, an SD card. And you're you're laughing, laughing, laughing. Yeah. laughing. that's really cheap, isn't it? As we as we say often, memory is just coming down and down, which is really good. And Transcend's a good name. I've had Transcend cards with no problems at all before. So they're up there, I think, with Samsung and SanDisk. Yes, they are. And Kingston. Right, my next one is a um, Soundcore Space Q45. Like the um, Anchor Power Bank, we, we saw this come in. We've reported on it before. It arrived at 140 quid. It's been compared favourably against the XM4 Sony headset. Um, you know, a, a poor man's Sony, if you like. But actually, those who have reviewed it have said it's it's not far off. And it's got 50 hours of um, battery in it, unlike the Sony. And it's got Bluetooth 5.3 as well on board. And anyway, the, after all this, I'll just tell you that, like the power bank, it's been reduced for the first time, 140 quid down to 98 quid. Mm. And uh, if I, I, I if I didn't have my Sony headset, I would be all over this. I would definitely want to have them because they look absolutely great. And wherever you go to look at a review, everyone raves about them, saying that, why buy a Sony? This is just so close. Yeah, they they do look gorgeous, especially that picture. (laughs) They look really nice. And also Anchor's um, uh, app that goes along with it has a lot of functionality built into it. Mm. They really went the extra mile with that app. So uh, the world that you're living in with these is going to be a lot more colourful and exciting too. Indeed. Yeah, very, very, nice. very good. That's a, a good price. It's a pity it's not on monthly. Mm. Might consider it for monthly. Because I have the Q30s, and I use them quite a lot. And I've been trying to justify upgrading, but I don't want to. You do that. Shall I have £100 right now just for that update? That's the trouble. That's the, that's the trouble I've got with the Sonys, is that they're so good. Um, if, uh, it would only be make sense if you didn't have them already. But Yeah. Um, apparently the Q45 is a step up in terms of uh, um, noise cancelling as well. So you, you probably would notice the difference, but you know, how much difference and also the, um, the, 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 the battery 50 hours of battery, you, you, you'd notice the difference with that as well. If you were out and about with them. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's notable. This is only on the black ones. Uh, the whites and the blues are still 140 pounds. Ooh. Ooh, yes. All right. Next up is the uh, is also from Anchor as well. Flipping heck, it's Anchor. 
Anchor of Google this week, um, is the USB-C charger, the Anchor Nano 2. This is a 65-watt uh, fast charger. It only has the one little USB Type-C on the back. It's IQ3, if you like. And it'll charge your 65-watt device super fast. And it's down in price from £40 to £25. I think that's a, a bit of a deal, a bit of a steal. What do you think? Yeah. Very good, yeah. I, I love this anchor stuff. Mm. And the Nano 2 were the ones that came out um, about a year ago, but they, they'd replaced the Nano, the ordinary Nanos, and they made the IQ better, and it was all much more intelligent. And um, Yeah, yeah. And, and as we said last week, I think, with one USB-C port, you don't get complicated. We're trying to work out what it's doing with what. Yeah. One plug is sort of straightforward. So, yeah, good bargain, that is. And lastly, we've got the Nokia T10, which we keep talking about. Mum doesn't listen to this podcast, so um, I can tell you that I got this because it was 99 quid. First reduction from 129. That's the Wi-Fi version, 32 gig, 3 gig version. You still can't get the 64.4 in the UK. Hmm. Again this week, I had that out with Nokia, and they don't want to know. I said, can I, shall I order it from Amazon UK? Do you have a worldwide um, warranty if I do that? No, we don't. And we do not recommend that you buy it from another country. You have to settle for the 32.3. Flip. Right, thanks very much. Yeah. They were just not prepared to listen. And that's the third time I've contacted... Anyway, as it happens, my mum will be fine with 32.3. She won't notice the difference for what she does. Um, but it's been reduced, yeah, for the first time. 129 to 99. All right. I'll just have a quick look at their store to see if see if it's hidden in there. That maybe they've slipped it in after they spoke, or spoke to you. Like Ted zammer has been on the phone. <laughs> what should we do? Yeah. No, it's not there, um, which is a real shame. And also, the um, 4G version is um, down from 150 to 120. So, savings all around. This is just a cute little um, Nokia tablet, which is 8 inches um, diagonal. And it has got quite good big bezels, but... Um, you know, it's just that we don't have that many op- options on tablets of this size, and it is nice. We've got we both got a T20 and, and think they're very nice. They're not the most powerful things in the world, but they're still very nice. So yeah, thirty quid off. And they're your recommendation for granny, apparently. Yeah, for granny. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right, well, we'll let love yous and leave yous. If you want to get in touch with us, you can by emailing us at uh, gareth at techalex.uk. You can also find me on Twitter as well, at Gareth Miles, G-A-R-E-T-H-M-Y-L-E-S on Twitter. I have my, what's it called again? Mast, Mastodon thing? Mastodon. Mastodon, that'll do. Um, I've got one of them there things. Um, I haven't linked to it or anything, but I just felt like mentioning it there because I remembered. Um, and you can find GarethMiles.com <laughs> for all other things about me. Ted, what about you? Where can they find you? All other things about me come from TedSalmon.com. Links in there to all of the audio podcasts and the MeWe groups. And so do come and join us and chat about whatever you like in any of the groups. And if you want to buy me a coffee, you can do that. It's PayPal.me forward slash Ted Salmon. How kind you are. I know you're going to do that, so I thank you in advance. Good call. Good call indeed. All right. Uh, we'll let you go. Um, have a lovely week, and we'll speak to you all next week. Bye. Cheerio. Bye.